All right, guys, what's going on? We're here. We're live. Uh, join your 1AK Chicago Joey coming to you here. Live GTO headquarters, Las Vegas, Nevada. Not at my usual setup in the studio. As you can see, we are live in person at Jean Robert Balan's, uh, his uh, a condo in the sky right here. Joining me on the podcast today for the first time ever. I've been doing podcasts for a long time. One of my number one requests that people have on is they want to see on Mr. Phil Ivey. And uh, somehow that day's finally arrived, 2021. We've been doing podcasts for a long time. Joining me today is a man that needs no, introdu needs no introduction. We're going to give him an introduction. He is uh, debatably one of the greatest poker players of all time. Ten-time World Series Poker Bracelet winner. One-time WPT champion. One of the best all-time poker players online of all time at maybe Hold'em, uh, PLO, Mixed Games, kind of just uh, the, the mix of all the games together. When I ask people on my podcast that play with you, who's one of the best poker players you ever play with in your life, they, uh, they usually mention... This man right here, Phil Ivey. He's one of the most famous poker players in the history of the game. People love, they love, they love asking about him. So I'm, I'm excited to be here, man. It's an honor to be here. Phil, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, how's things going with you, man? <laughs> That's a hell of a lead-in. <laughs> um, well, yeah. I went easy. Things I went, things, I went easy. I could have yeah. went a little longer with that okay, one. Okay, well, well, thank you. I appreciate it. It was very kind of you. Yeah, thank yeah, you, really. man. Yeah, um, really. Just uh, things are going really well for me mm -hmm. right now. Um, you know, um, just, you know, doing the day to day, yeah. uh, the pandemic was very, very good for me personally. Mm -hmm. It allowed me to, you know, reset myself mm -hmm. and, um, you know, uh, realize what's important and what's not. Yeah. And, um, I think coronavirus did that for a lot of people Yeah. because you kind of were going at one speed, maybe autopiloting for so many years. And then all of a sudden you, you're at your home, you can't leave then a month or two sets in and you say, well, what the hell am I going to do with myself here? Am I going to play poker online? Am I going to go to the park, spend time with my family? <laughs> am I going to start learning how to, how to make my backyard nice? Like, you know, kind of, it, it gave a lot of people a chance to reset and break out of that autopilot that a lot of people are on. So it sounds like for you, that was, uh, that was, that was a good thing for you then? I mean, it was, a, it was an incredible thing. And um, it allowed me to just get back in touch with like, you know, uh, myself, my family, you know, reality, you know, I started doing a lot of yoga and meditating and just, um, you know, um, getting things back in order mm -hmm. and um, allow me to recognize, you know, what's important and what's not. And, um, you know, uh, put a value on things and um, put a certain value on things that like are important to me, like, you know, my mental health and mm -hmm. um, exercise and family mm -hmm. and a lot uh, of that links together too yeah and um it's really liberating to know like what's really matters mm -hmm. you know and it's like uh, i'm in a really good place in my life mm -hmm. right now and it's uh you know i'm really happy that's awesome man it's good yeah. to hear i mean i think a lot of people out there you know a lot of people out there really care about you as well too you know what i mean you've been around poker a long time they care a lot about you so it's good for you to hear that and people to kind of see that about you because you know, whether you like it or not, right, you're one of the faces that a lot of poker players grew up with and see, saw you on TV all the time, playing high-stakes poker. Now I mean, making I, me feel old. No, I mean, I was 44 years old, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm 35. I'm getting kind of old. I started playing when I was 22 years old. And, uh, you know, a lot of us in that generation, we grew up watching these rail heaven games on full tilt poker. And obviously, you were a mainstay in the game. You're playing Hold'em. You're mixing PLO. I'm like, how the fuck is this guy playing PLO and Hold'em at the same time against six tables, sometimes three tables, playing two opponents? Isildur's in the mix getting crazy. So a lot of people grew up with you, but a lot of people don't know. You know, there, there was that, like, after Black Friday, a lot of people didn't necessarily get to, you know, some people made content, some people went to private games, some people disappeared from the, the poker spotlight altogether. And you kind of, you know, kind of came and went a little bit, obviously had some issues over time with certain things and kind of stayed out of the public eye. So I think it's real refreshing for a lot of poker fans out there just to hear that. You know, you're doing great. Are you feeling good? Are you feeling good about your life? Or you feel like you're in a good spot with yourself? Yeah, I am now. It's been a hell of a. It's been a hell, it's been, it's, it's been a hell of a ride. But um, yeah, you know, here we are. I know, right? I mean, yeah. I guess when you uh, you mentioned right now that you were, you felt clear and you felt like what's important. And when you look back on your career into this point, I mean, kind of start gambling at a very young age, right? And uh, being into poker at a very young age, and now a little bit older of a man, 44 years old. Do you look back and say, uh, do you look back and say, maybe I would have done it a little differently? Because I think um, a lot of people kind of reevaluate those you, things. You have uh, some regret, but as you like, I think as you start to kind of evolve, you realize that everything happened exactly the way it was supposed to be to get you to this moment now. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, um, 
I am just really incredibly grateful for all the experiences that I had, mm -hmm. you know, to get me to here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like, Definitely. you know, there's been some, you know, I've had a lot of um, some interesting experiences <laughs> and um, some, and a lot of good times. Yeah. I had a lot of fun, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, I may have went a little too far with that fun. Let's just say we yeah. could keep it, you know, a little light. Yeah. And, um, you know, and now, you know, I'm, I'm pretty settled in. Yeah. So do yeah. you feel like, uh, I mean, so my, myself, I had a lot of fun. Once I started having some success, success at poker, I started traveling, I started getting real out of line, I started hanging out with people who uh, didn't have my best interest at heart, really, right? In terms of like when it comes to partying, when it comes to, you know, whatever might happen during those partying with women, with that kind of stuff like that. Just you get so much opportunity thrown at you. And now you, being one of the most famous poker players in the world, you are getting opportunity, business opportunity, women opportunity, poker opportunity, every opportunity you can imagine kind of thrown at you. And uh, like, what is it just kind of like to deal with that on your end? There, there, there was lots of opportunities and um, some of them I took full advantage of and mm -hmm. some of them I didn't. And um, you know, that's it. You know, that's, what can I say? You know, I mean, that was a, that was a time that, that, was, that was what was happening back then. Mm -hmm. um, your question was, what was it like? Yeah, what's that like, kind of dealing with the dealing with all that when you're also I, trying I mean, to maintain well, you know, a poker you know, ability? The thing is, the thing is, when you're in it, you don't really, you know, it's kind of like it was just kind of happening so fast. You mm -hmm. know, like I got a hold of a bunch of money at a young age, and you know, I was in Vegas, and um, you know, you get you get kind of like a part of like, you know, the scene. You start going out quite a bit, and things just happen really, really fast, mm -hmm. and you get used to a certain life. And, you know, then you get around, you know, like you said, people that uh, maybe necessarily don't have your best interest in mind. I don't really, I, I wouldn't really say, I wouldn't really say that because, you know, I probably didn't have their best interest in mind either. Mm -hmm. It's just where I was at at the time, you know? Do you feel like, uh, do you feel like poker, when you're playing poker at the table? Because you're obviously known for being very intense, very locked in, you're able to look at people, observe body language, uh, pick up on the energy they're putting out, and a lot of people aren't even aware of maybe what they're putting out in some of these situations. So do you feel like poker was maybe an escape for you from maybe worrying about all the other things that that kind of world has to give you? I think that, yes, I think that my first real addiction to anything was poker. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I used poker as an escape from reality for many years, you know, like I played from the time I was 18, 19 years old till about 32, you know, I played every single day almost, mm -hmm. you know, and wow, many, man. many, 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 many hours. And, you know, you know, I basically, I, I, I spent those years that people uh, mature and grow up, I spent them at a poker table. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I yeah. never really grew up. I never really dealt with any emotion, never really dealt with any, uh, you know, past things that you need to deal with in order to like evolve and like to grow, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, you know, so, but as you get into the work and you start working on yourself, what I realize is that everything that I thought about myself, mm -hmm. well, most things I thought about myself and how I saw myself, mm -hmm. it was quite the opposite. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and um, so, Does yeah. Does come know. to mind specifically when you, when you look back and you sort of start to think about those things? Um... I thought I was a very, I, I thought I was a very uh, unselfish person. That one really comes to mind, you know. I thought I was very unselfish because I would, you know, take care of people with money. You know, mm -hmm. I would take care of my family with money. I would take care of friends with money and this and that, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, I was very selfish with my time. I did exactly what I wanted to do. I never really, um, I was selfish with in relationships. Yeah. I was selfish with people that I cared about as far as like, you know, doing what I wanted to do and not sacrificing what I wanted at any point to for other people mm -hmm. and you know that came out with you know the the, the work that I did yeah. and it was something that I need to work on still on a daily basis that's a hard habit to break I think a lot of times you think about what makes me a successful poker player oftentimes it is being selfish with your time yeah, selfish with your energy with your thoughts about what you're thinking about for poker wise or 
maybe you're analyzing hands, you're analyzing a situation. You obviously got to spend time playing as well too. To I mean, if to... you want to get really, really good at something, you need to be. You need to be. There's a certain part of you have to. You have to give up, and you have to be selfish and kind of self-centered and kind of like you know put all your energy and attention into it. Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely. Especially yeah. if you want to be, you know, great. Right. So, you know, um, that's what I did. I, you know, I just kind of went. I just gave up life itself yeah. and put all of my attention and energy into poker. And um, again, I had great benefits from it mm -hmm. uh, financially and, you know, like whatever, like, you know, winning tournaments and things like that. Mm -hmm. But eventually I paid a price, yeah. you know? It's like, you know, you, 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 you pay a price when you don't take the time and, you know, um, work on yourself. Mm -hmm. Eventually you just hit a wall. I mean, not everybody, I guess not everybody, but you know, I did. Yeah. What do you think that wall was? Is it a certain time, a certain occurrence? Um, no, it's not. It's not a specific yeah. uh, event. Mm -hmm. You know, um, pretty much I started really working on myself. I didn't really like the, my behavior. I didn't really like, you know, my reactions to things. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the things that I was doing. And um, you know, luckily I have a some people who really care about me and were able to, you know, let me know. What the, what they're able to tell you, and you, they would tell me. Yeah, first, you know, yeah. I fought it. You know, you push it away. Nah, get out of here. Like you know, yeah. well, I was like, Bob, but eventually, like, if you get, you know, for me, I got told it enough. It was time to do something about it. Yeah. So, so the, what was that change like? As you mentioned, balancing and kind of just being more conscious in terms of being more mindful and thinking more about others. Well, I would imagine too. Thinking yeah. more about others, and um, you know, like um, I would say, the, the change, uh, you know, involves you know, uh, yoga, mm -hmm. uh, meditation, thinking about others, you know, not like to be kind of cheesy or whatever, but thinking how to make the world a better place, yeah. you know? And, you know, you do that. It doesn't have to be necessarily some big thing, you know, but just calling someone, you know, seeing how, how, how they're doing, mm -hmm. you know, and checking on them. And, you know, going out of your way to help others, not to be used, but to help others, not financially, but- right. Just emotionally you know, and, you know, support, and, uh, yeah, checking and, on them, you know, because I feel like, you know, somebody gets a text from you, right? That might hit different than if they get a text from somebody else. Because I think a lot of people look up to you, they probably respect you a it lot. Might, it, might hit, it might hit worse too sometimes, <laughs> you know, it just depends. That's what you say, yeah, it that's true, depends. right? I mean, I guess, yeah, it's a responsibility that I guess you have to think about for yourself when you give out input, whether it's positive or negative. You know, certain people perceive you a certain way and they're gonna really take that shit to heart. And that can be something to think about as well too because that's not always a good feeling to be in when you're kind of giving someone maybe some critical advice you feel like they need and uh, they don't want to hear from it. It's not even about giving advice. You got to be careful about giving advice too because sometimes you come up for, uh, you, that, that could come up uh, uh, the wrong way. I don't really usually give advice unless um, Someone asked someone's you. asked me directly, you know, because usually that gets taken the wrong way and who really knows what the hell they're talking about anyway. <laughs> right. You know, we're all just kind of figuring it out as we go. Yeah. What's uh what's your kind of what's your life like right now in terms of with poker and uh, are you still playing or are you, no, no, what, what do you what do you kind of do with poker I'm, man? You know, I'm looking to play. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking know, to get in the mix. I, I'm okay. Looking, I'm looking to get back you know in the mix and play. You know. Uh -huh. uh, You're looking good, man. What do you? Thank you. You know, working out. You know, what's happening here? You know, working out a little bit. And uh, I'm, I'm looking to play. Yeah. I'm looking to do some traveling, play some tournaments, and. You know, we have a we have a tournament coming down. We do. I'm, I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go down to Cabo and play. So you're gonna that. be in Cabo. The 25K is coming up in uh, June 18th. I'll be down there as well too. Tom will be down there. Maybe he might be down there. And I know Landon will be down there. A few other people are gonna be down there as well. It's gonna be a really interesting mix of businessmen, influencers, and then uh, and I then really, some real real, I, real top I, players. I, I just want to say I really hope Tom comes. He's the, probably the worst golfer I've ever seen oh. in my entire life. You think you'll be able so, to get him on the golf on the golf course to golf with you? I, I, I might. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. So where did uh, where did the love of the gambling come in? Right, with the prop bets, with uh, with uh, you know craps or with man, golfing I, or man, where, where man, I always love gambling. Like you know that was like really my first real love. Is like I, I love the gamble. You know I started off gambling at a very young age on the street shooting dice. You know, mm -hmm. um, and you know I would go to like little like home casinos and you know go to little places and play poker and I've just traveled all around playing pokers poker you know New Jersey and New York and yeah. um, you know some maybe not the most safest places I've been to during that <laughs> journey but you know I didn't really view it at that time as yeah I didn't really look at it at the time it was just the way it was back then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, 
you know, kind of people, a lot of people ask about no home Jerome, right? It's kind of your old nickname with the ID and, and sleeping on the beach or sleeping outside. Like when you think back to that time, like it what? wasn't, you know, you know, I, I think that kind of get stretched a little bit far, you know, like I, I did sleep outside a couple of times mm -hmm. after missing the bus back yeah. and not having any money. That happens. You know, yeah, so that does happen. You know, <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, it's a free bus you get back. So if you miss that bus, you have to wait till the next day. Right. So you need that money I, for the I hotel know, there. So, so you're like, I got to You know, I, I never slept where it was cold out. It was the, it was summer, mm -hmm. and you know, I slept outside underneath the boardwalk, and you know, and um, yeah, a couple times. Yeah. It's, it, it, when you look uh, back on that, do you feel like that uh, any lessons you take away from that time of your life that don't miss the bus, don't miss the bus? But, no. <laughs> Um, I mean, just, that's actually really good advice because I know a lot of my degenerates out there who play poker. They go to like uh, some of these casinos from Chicago to the Majestic or Horseshoe and they take a bus to get there. They lose all their money playing or gambling and then they, they can't get and home. Then, so. and then you're stuck there. Yeah, then you're stuck there. You got to find a friend to come there and Uber, someone to borrow yeah. your money. You know, it ain't, it ain't a comfortable position to be in. You know, you know how many times I drove back from Atlantic City after I got my car and like pretending I'm putting uh, money in a toll booth? Because I ran, I don't even have the money to put the money in the toll booth. Thirty-five really? cents, yeah. So yeah, you know that's a. A lot of people have been out there like in that same. A lot of people are in that yeah. situation right now. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of people are. Yeah. When you think back on that, I mean, I guess it's got to feel pretty good to come this far, right? In terms of your understanding of gambling, or maybe like your understanding of risk, or maybe just your understanding of how never to maybe be in that position again. Um, I, ho I hope not. Yeah. But, you know, you know, you never know, and. Um, it's, yeah, you know, when I look back at my journey through poker and stuff like that, it's, it's really incredible. A lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot of it was being at the right time in the right place. And, you know, of course, mm -hmm. um, um, if this would have been 20 years ago, you know, my story would be different. Yeah. You know, I was, you know, right there when poker came on TV. Right. You know, I had a lot of success early, you know, on some televised things. And, um, you know, then full tilt and then, you know, blah, 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 the rest is kind of history. Yeah. So with, with kind of that point in time early on in your career, I heard you mention that, uh, you know, no one real supported you playing poker. And I remember, I think a lot of people I talked to, myself personally, my parents absolutely hated that I wasn't going to school, that I wasn't going to get a job, that I was going to start playing online poker on poker stars, right? My mom's like, what the fuck are you doing with yourself? Like, why would you do that? And I've heard you mention that your grandpa was supportive of you playing, but your parents weren't supportive of you playing at all at that point in time. No, they didn't. They didn't like the fact that I was. They, they just uh, they just put poker with gambling. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not even saying that they were wrong to not even support it. Really, right? You know, like yeah. I mean, most people uh, don't really make it that play, play poker. So, right. um, you know, maybe they they probably were giving me the right message. Mm -hmm. You know, they probably they, they, may, they may not have delivered it. You know the right way but right. they probably were giving me the right message and my grandfather was just like you know he knows he, he knew how stubborn i was and he said well i know you're going to do it anyway so i'm going to go ahead and support you you know yeah so he knew yeah. that even if he no matter what right you're going to do it so there's no point to say like don't do it when you already know you're going to do it yeah, yeah i was already i was already in too deep yeah so your 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 dad was a boxer, a competitive boxer. Or was oh, he, he boxed some. He 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 boxed some. My father went to the Air Force. Mm -hmm. you know, he was air uh, air traffic controller mm -hmm. in the Air Force, and um, we had a very our, our relationship was very combative mm -hmm. for many years, you know, and um, when I was I was around twenty five, twenty six, we kind of started getting along, and then you know he passed away like like four or five months later. Damn. So, you know, just as we were kind of getting along and get, kind of getting to know each other again, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, he passed away. Mm. Mm. So how did that impact, I guess, you know, your poker, like a peak of your career at that point, right? You're you know, doing you, really well. Um, yeah, yeah, it was, it was tough. Again, you know, that was one of the things I never actually really, um, at that moment, I didn't really know how to grieve it, yeah. you know, so I kind of just... Pushed it, pushed it down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, you know, it's something I just pushed down and pushed away. Yeah. And um, eventually, I got to grieve it. Yeah. So it was, it was nice to kind of let that go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got to be. Uh, I mean, it's tough, right? I mean, how do people deal with emotion, especially in poker, when you're kind of taught to turn off that emotion and, and be you, this this dead it, inside it, personality? It, you know, in poker, 
you know, you train yourself for so many years to cut off emotion. And mm -hmm. for me, like, you know, you know, I don't want to be too high up. I don't want to be too low um, at a poker table. And I want to stay emotionally level, uh, especially when losing, you know, I think uh, that's like super important. And so, you know, you, you know, if you're 12, 13 years in a row playing 16 hours a day, you know, and you're, you're so trained, you turn off that part of you. Right. You know what I mean? That has, you, you transfer that into real life. And then you become emotionally unavailable in like every area of your life because right. you shut that part off, you know? So getting back to that is a process. For mm -hmm. me, it was. Yeah, process for me. I mean, I, I consciously decided I played poker every day for about four or five years straight, playing online, thought about poker every day for about 10 years. And then finally I'm like, I just like, I gotta, I wanna get some emotion back. Like I wanna, <laughs> I'm in these relationships. Like I'm just like not really feeling anything. I'm so married to poker and I'm like, I just don't wanna fucking do this anymore. Well, you, know, you, know, you, I, I, you, I just, you realize like another thing is about relationships. You realize when you have the same situation keeps coming up over and over again. <laughs> and you're like, wait a second, okay, it's me. It's not them. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. that was like another big, you know, realization. I mean, it's yeah. a lot of common sense to a lot of people, but it took me so, so, some. <laughs> Isn't that weird, it though, right? It, it takes longer. Than but others. I find that strange because it's. I mean, the same thing kind of for me and other people I know. But you're so used to being like so good at poker, and you're like, well, I'm good at this too, right? It's easy to get better at this. Doesn't I, seem to work that way, though. Like it just doesn't doesn't go intuitively like you think it might go in that yeah, situation. Yeah, being good at poker does not equate to being good in life, <laughs> you know. And um, it just like it took for me, just like it took a lot of work mm -hmm. to you know get good at poker it takes a lot of work to get good in life yeah you know? so what, what kind of motivates you right now and I've heard you talk about uh, you don't want to help people out and you have a lot of perspective to give and you have a lot of wisdom to give and you have a lot of opportunity to give people too if someone says hey I want to you know maybe try to do this you can say oh I put you in touch with this person that can maybe make that happen and yeah, kind of you know, I, I do things like that yeah. um, you know I do things like that and um, um, mm -hmm is a big part of my life uh, right now that I don't, I'm gonna talk about this later in another interview, mm -hmm. but you know, there's a big part of my life that is dedicated to helping people. Yeah. And uh, you know, and that's, um, and it brings me a lot of joy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. um, and you know, that's where I'm at. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that I probably didn't come off no, I mean, I get what you're saying. Are you probably working on something that makes sense? You got something yeah, that works on, or something? Yeah, you something you know, I don't want to talk about yeah, right exactly, this right yeah. second. Yeah. And then, so you kind of want to mix that and you obviously have your, your personal life and you also want to maintain the, the healthy, balanced life in terms of eating well and meditating, keep moving around, keep working out, maybe trying to stay away from a lot of alcohol or anything like that as well, too, and then yeah, mix you know, some that, poker me, or me, what? Me, me, me and alcohol have parted ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, we had a we had a great relationship for, for a very long time, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I'm on a, let's say, a much-needed break. Yeah. 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 What age did that happen? Because I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm thinking about this for myself. A couple years ago. Couple it's, years just, ago. It's, just, it's, just, um, it's just much easier to, to uh, you know, being sober is just a much easier, more effective life for me. Mm -hmm. So that's just a choice that I make. Yeah, easier to be disciplined, easier uh, to be mentally all there, mindful. Because when you get drunk I mean, just, or anything just, like just that, yeah. I mean, just every area of my life has improved since I stopped drinking. Yeah. 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 A lot of people out there might need to hear that, right? Maybe that's holding them back in some of these areas of their life. Yeah, maybe. You know, I mean, you know, poker so. and partying kind of go hand in hand, you know, like, you know. They do. I, I, think, mean, I think you look at the way you just look at the way you just look, <laughs> look like you got some good memories here. I got some great memories. I mean, I'll, I'm kind of getting to that point where I'm just like, man, you know, what do I what am I going to do here? Right. You got content or you got poker, you got business, you got investments. Now there's crypto kind of coming up as well, too. So it's just like, you know, the, the landscape of high stakes poker now to me is a lot different online. It's not quite the same as it used to be. And I still enjoy playing online poker, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, you know, when something comes up, like this tournament coming up, I'm going to have a great time doing that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when they have certain events and, and you know, uh, things come up, yeah. it's great. But, I, you know, I still am one of those guys that prefer to play live yeah. and look at my opponent. Mm -hmm. I think um, nowadays it's, uh, you know, online has gotten a lot tougher. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of can negate some of that by playing someone when I, I can see them a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. so 
got that intensity. I don't know intensity a little, but you know, I never like played it's, with it's, you just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, uh, I, I flow a little better with in person. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like that that people are are affected by your presence at the poker table when you're there? This is what people say to me all the time. This is like another thing that comes up all the time. Yeah. I, you know, I don't, I don't really think about that. You mm. know, I don't think about oh, I'm affecting this guy with my presence. That you don't. That thought's never come in my head. No. Okay. You know, I'm just there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. um, I'm just there. I'm I'm playing and. Um, people say, you know, you make, he makes, you know, uh, Phil makes me uncomfortable and blah, 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 but that's something going on with them, right? If they're uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Because it's not like... I mean, the game's I, still I'm, the game. I, I'm not trying to make them comfortable either, so I, I, I don't... I'm really just trying to figure out what they have and kind of just like looking at, you know, checking out what's going on. Mm-hmm. Just observing, like, what's kind of going on, you know? Mm-hmm. And if that makes them uncomfortable, then that makes them uncomfortable, you know? So, so you, I guess it's like, yeah. you know, I guess it's, it ends up working out. Yeah, I guess like the idea, I mean, the way to think about poker is if you make people uncomfortable, oftentimes they're going to put them in uncomfortable spots. They're going to make worse decisions. You put them in three bed pots, deep stack out of position. They've never thought about the decision before. They just, you know, if you can add to that level of uncomfortability, it just, it means in me is that they're going to make worse decisions when it comes to understanding what to do in that moment. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's all it's about really poker at the end of the day is making, you know, more good decisions than bad decisions. Right. Really, you know, like in there's some key spots that come up where, where a lot of times, especially live, you could kind of throw everything out the window and you got to make the right decision, mm-hmm. you know, especially in the big pots, right? So you could, you could uh, eliminate a lot of little minor mistakes with a couple good decisions. Right, yeah. You know? And those big pots matter so much at live because it's like you're playing 30 hands an hour and then you <laughs> yeah, might not... It, it, you it, might it, not see another big pot like that for a week. I know, yeah. Month, you Especially know, you, 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 you love just, the deep stacks, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, how do you... How do you process that feeling when you lose a 400, 500 big blind deep pot? You start 400 big blinds effective. You lose a big pot to someone. You felt like you played the hand perfectly. And you know you might not see that size pot back for you know, a little bit of time. Does that really impact I, you or I just like it. whatever? You love it? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> you're yeah, sick, yeah, dude. yeah, I do. I love it. I love it. I mean, especially like, especially. Oh my God, you're so sick. Especially if you haven't done anything wrong, right? You like, you played the hand good. You know, then it's just one of love those it. things. Yeah. So you're like, what, what, what's going through your mind? I mean, like, you, liar, okay. I'm like, like you know now we're I mean? going or what? What are you, what are you thinking? I'm thinking, oh, sometimes I may just quit. You know, it just, oh. depend, it just depends. But, you know, like okay. it depends on like the situation who's still there and like a lot of times you know you can't quit certain certain situations you can't quit in um but you know i just shouldn't you know like just like kind of like you know if you enjoy winning you have to kind of appreciate the fact that you're going to lose sometimes mm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. and i think it just makes it much it's a much easier game and a much better experience yeah you know I, mean? I mean a lot of people out there need to learn how to do that they don't they don't you know, you look online on Twitter with some of these people like in crypto investing, like these guys do not take losing very kindly. They, they don't understand it. that it's necessary evil to win. You got to lose sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you kind of like, you know, I think that comes with experience too, right? Like if you, if you play, uh, you know, so many hands, so many hours, like stuff like that, you know, you're going to lose some of these spots sometimes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, the fans don't really like that when you lose, you're like, whatever, next hand, right? But they like some emotion, you know, it's like, they like to bring it, oh, fuck, you know, they like it when you're slamming it, ah, you know, hell me's getting up, ranting, ah, yeah, yeah, you know, so they kind of, they seem to enjoy that kind of stuff, right? But it's not really your style, right? No, that's you not lose, my style. You lose, you're like, all right, that's all right, not, right, that's right, not, right, that's not my style. Next that's, hand, next that's, hand? That's not my style, really, yeah. you know? I mean, you know, we all have off days, you know, maybe I might have a, like a reaction sometimes, mm-hmm. How's know, it? Know. How does it feel to know that there's so many people that are still interested in what the hell you're doing and what you think about the past stories, right? All these ventures you've been on. Like, what is that kind of, is that? I mean, I'm honored. You know, like, that's nice to have people still interested in what you're doing, you know, right? Mm -hmm. It's nice to still have fans and, um, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I I mean, I'm very appreciative of every, you know, of every fan that I have and everybody that's been, you know, Mm -hmm. here with me along this journey, you know? Mm -hmm. So... It's got to feel great, right? You know, the fans come up to you and, you know, I even sometimes I might walk through here, the Vegas, and, you know, people might recognize you from a YouTube channel and they're mm-hmm. like, oh, I want to get a photo. You're like, oh, this is the coolest fucking thing ever, right? It's like these super nice people. They just, uh, they, they watch you. They, they see you on TV. They care about you. They want to know how you're doing. And, you know, they're it's, interested. It's really, really nice. And I'm re- it's really, uh, you know, um, 
appreciative of it. You know what yeah, I mean? Because it's like, you know, without the fans, poker will not be as big as it's gotten. Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, like, you have to be appreciative of every fan that there is. Yeah, I think without yeah. ambassadors like yourself and like Daniel and like Phil Hellmuth, like Doyle Brunson, you know, without those people that you could look at as a fan when you're in 2007 and say like, you know, I want to be you like that. You have to go back to 2007, but uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, let me look up my little uh, notepad here. I mean, people ask me, they want to know about a bunch of stories. So I'm just going to fire off a few of these things to you and uh, we'll kind of go from there. So a lot of people ask about this Tom Dwan hand. So it's still ask about this hand. You versus Tom Dwan. You've got the ace six of diamonds. Flop, mm -hmm. He three bets you out of position. You call. He's got nine eight of spades. Flop comes down. King queen ten. Two diamonds. You got the nut flush draw. Super deep stack. He bets. You just call. Turn is like a three or something like that. Not really relevant to the hand. He bets again. You call. Rivers the six. So you make a pair of sixes. The board's king queen ten. Like it's like three and six. And he bets about pot, 286000 And then you're sitting there, and Ellie Lezer is sleeping next to you. Dana Grano won't shut up about thinking about what he knows what's going on in the hand. You tank for a while and say, and, and kind of go in this, this, this like legendary just talk in. Tom Dwan's like staring at the table like this. He like, he's got eye issues. You know he's having problems with his eyes. So what's kind of going through your mind in that moment in time? Because, you know, I, you know initially I had in my mind I was going to just like move in on a river. Mm -hmm. And then the six kind of like made me made, made my brain freeze, mm. you know, mm -hmm. and then I was thinking like didn't expect that And then I knew I had took too long now to move in, you know, you reach the point where it's obvious that Okay, well you you reach the point where like you can only call now. Yeah, that's what happened mm -hmm. um, You know, and then I started Whatever like and, and then I thought I there was something else that went on in the hand. I don't really want to exactly talk about because mm -hmm. you know Tom's still relevant. Friend. Tom's one, you know, oh, okay. and um, and uh, and that made me think that he didn't really have much. But I was so concerned with him, you know, bluffing with it. He, he yeah, got like a ten, maybe something like that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And sounds decided to fold it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you got Daniel talking next to you, and he's talking about he knows what you have, and you're like, you don't know what I got. Oh. Do you think you know what you had? No, he didn't know what I have. Of what do you think? No. He, what do you think he thought you had? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's some pretty legendary moments back in uh, high stakes poker that you were at the poker table for. Any any stand out in your mind in terms of maybe like? Uh, no, not really. You have to bring them up to me, and I'll, no? remember, I'll remember them. Well, there's one moment. I mean, this isn't a positive moment for you, but my man Brad Booth, when uh, when he made you fold those pocket kings, right? I mean, that's like a hand. That's like a early sort of high stakes poker early oh, season yeah, hand. Yeah, that, yeah. Was just a, that was just a. I, I mean, I. I I, the thing is that about that hand is that I never um, played one hand of poker with Brad Booth at that point. Hmm. So I didn't know what the hell was going on. This guy just bet 300 <laughs> some thousand into like a $15,000 pot or whatever it was. I just never seen anyone. At that point, I've never seen anyone do that. So it was just like, okay. Like, you know, like, guy must, I mean, yeah. it's, it's just like so strange. Mm -hmm. I like, I'm just not, I'm just not, I'm not, I, I, okay, you just win. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, yeah. People. That's that. That's that. You know. Sometimes it's like you know, like if, 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 if somebody, you know, if I, you know, if I have like ten thousand in the middle or something like that, and then somebody bets a million dollars, right? Like I just, just too confusing. Like I, I right. just, like got I just figure, I just figure there's an easier way to win than guessing, right? In that spot, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. So that was especially really, that deep. That right? was my that was my thought process. Then it's like I, it was, was going to be a much easier way to win. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, a good, it's just some chance he has nothing, but it's just... He's got at least a flush draw there, right? I mean, the guy, huh? the guy would be, he's got at least a flush draw, right, in that situation. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I would think so. But I didn't think he had, I mean, I, I didn't think he had... crazy four, guy, yeah, 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 Brad Booth, crazy guy, man. What's, That's he, the what's, original. He what's he doing now? You I don't know, yeah, I think the last time I heard he was missing. Oh, shit. I know, yeah, he's like missing oh, okay. in, a, in, a, in a park or something like that. I don't know if he's been, been found, maybe he's been found, yeah, okay, yeah, I mean... Nice guy. Doing okay. nice yeah, guy. Nice guy. Hope he's doing right. I mean, okay yeah, too. yeah. You know, he's play roll long sessions online, go through big swings. You know, he kind of ran into some issues. I think with, I think maybe a scam, or some money. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, there's just, uh, yeah. I hope he's doing well. I mean, he's kind of like, you know, you look back on those days and they would bring in these businessmen. They'd bring in a Gil Liberté to the game. They brought in Jamie Gold after he won the World Series Poker main event to the table. Sam Barhas in the mix, right? I mean, it's just like these cast of characters that. Uh, 
I don't know, man. It's just hard to explain kind of the, the specialty. What do you think made that show so special for for the fans and maybe for the players I that were involved? I think what made it special back then is, first of all, the originality of it. Like, you know, no one's ever actually, all the, all the, uh, the TV poker was tournaments. Mm -hmm. So no one actually really has seen high stakes poker with, you know, cash and chips and those, that, that group of characters. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was like a combination of like a lot of things that just made that show work. Yeah, the novelty factor, that's a good point. Because I, I always think about, you know, what made that show so great versus maybe some content we have out now. And you're right, it was a very new thing and with players that we all knew from ESPN. Because you saw a lot of these players like Ellie and Sammy and yourself, you saw those players on ESPN all the time. Also, the advertising for poker was like so, um, you know, so, so, so highly advertised with online poker, you know, like there was mm -hmm. so many sites yeah, the operators you know, pushing spent, it. You yeah, they were spending a lot of money. Yeah, spending, marketing money. They were spending yeah. a lot of marketing money, uh, you know, to really push poker back then, too. Mm -hmm. So you had Full Tilt and you had Poker Stars competing. So you had ambassadors from both sides. So Poker Stars has Moneymaker. They're pushing them up. Full Tilt has you guys. They're pushing you guys up. Poker After Dark's running on NBC. ESPN's running reruns all night long. So mm -hmm. it's just like, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that, that distribution that we had back then was so much different than it is now, where it's YouTube and Twitch and, you know, ESPN doesn't even have the World Series Poker Main Event anymore after last year. So now it's going to be on CBS Sports. So it's kind of like the distribution for getting the game out there and the players out there has drastically changed. And now you have to adjust and figure out, you know, well, how do you get attention outside of maybe your, your core audience for, for poker now? And, and what's the strategy and how do you do that? And I think people are trying to figure that out now. And obviously legalized poker in America being what it is now doesn't help at all for America. Mm. And yeah. because you don't have that same, those same operators spending money in this country, you have a World Series of Poker, it doesn't really do a ton outside of interjecting money into the community with the ambassadors and that sort of thing like that. So I think there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic about what's going on, especially with legality kind of the way it is right now and with new states coming in and new operators coming in. But for right now, it's kind of this lull period where, you know, we're seeing who's going to, what's going to shake out. You know, yeah, who's going to sit, we're going to sit back and watch Yeah, and see what happens. And you're, and you're and with Poker King. So what are your thoughts about Poker King and kind of being involved with that site and this project? Oh man, you know, like my experience with Poker King has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a great group of guys, you know, um, the owners are just fantastic people, mm -hmm. you know, and um, that's, obviously you know very important to me who i'm dealing with like you know just as people in general um i got to spend quite a bit of time with them mm -hmm. um you know i think they're going to do some really really big things in poker because they care about poker yeah. you know they care about they, you know they care about poker and they're willing to put their money where their mouth is and i think um um Poker King is going to be one of the biggest brands there yeah. is. Yeah, I could see that. I think right now it's really open for the taking because you know other poker sites like a Poker Stars has kind of pivoted away from what their old strategy was. You have new sites kind of trying to come and take that mantle, and then you have Poker King, which is trying to establish itself as well right now and abroad and in America and on the content platforms. And you know they got a pretty good guy uh, working behind the scenes right now on the content. One of the best content guys I know. So. I'm pretty optimistic about what's yeah, he happening. He bamboozles me into this interview, but we'll, 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 you know, we'll, He's learning, kid. He's yeah, learning. Yeah, he he's been coming he a long time. He, he's he, learning. He got me today. He he's got learning. Me today. He's good. learning. He's I, I learning. Like, I respect it. He's it won't learning. happen again, though, but I respect it. Well, you like it no, so no, no, far. It's cool. It's, it's cool. cool. It's yeah, cool. man. I mean, yeah. I like us once again. You know, I appreciate you coming on, being able to talk to you about these things, and you know, these people. They all they all want to know about a lot of things. They all want to know about. Well, I want to know about my man Barry Greenstein, right? So I had Barry Greenstein on my podcast a couple times, and this guy loves to talk he's dropping wisdom he loves to tell stories he's got a lot of stories about you of course right what's uh what's kind of like your relationship like with barry and uh me and barry go way back you yeah. know like um uh barry's kind of one of the first people that i well w one of the first people that i actually really talked about poker hands with you know like seriously um back then mm -hmm. um he was one of the most successful poker players when i at, at that time you know and um he just always carried himself really well at the table, always very good demeanor and things like that, you know, so I respected him and Chip and the guys that kind of carried themselves like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, you know, uh, we go way back, we've had, always had like a, you know. Healthy rivalry. A, a healthy rivalry and a, you know, uh, um, a good friendship. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why, you know, I originally uh, 
agreed to do the interview with Barry, mm -hmm. even though you know he did most of the talking. But it's cool. <laughs> I saw that. You know? well, <laughs> but I mean, he, Barry, though, you know, I love him. He was like the first guy on my podcast that like he would talk a lot, but he, but he like said a lot of in really interesting things, right? He's like dropping about women. He was talking about sex in there. I'm like, my God, yeah, Barry, doesn't, Barry, Barry doesn't care about. It. He just he just <laughs> talks about whatever he's doing. <laughs> Which, you know, which is nice. He's very genuine, you know? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed having him on. I mean, I learned so much from him because he told a lot of, real, he just gave a lot of wisdom that you don't often hear from maybe like newer school players. He has like older school wisdom. It's clearly, clearly thought about it a lot. He's clearly talked about a lot of his ideas and kind of stress tested them to very smart people over the years. So he seems to have a pretty good conclusion on a lot of these things or at least something interesting that you maybe didn't think about. He definitely has a conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> Well, whether they're right kid or not, yeah, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a lot of conclusions, you know. Yeah. Well, a lot of people want to know about this, uh, about back in the day, right, the whole corporation where you played the rich businessman, Andy Beal. The, the pool of players in Vegas got together, played this guy. He was kind of beating him down. And then you came in and uh, helped these pros not go, not go busto back in the day. Is that I, sort of how I, I, I didn't. I wasn't thinking about helping anybody not go busto. I was thinking about... It was Beat a good opportunity. It was, you know, a good opportunity to uh, play someone who who isn't a professional. Yeah. And um, you know, I'm just I'm grateful to ha to have had that opportunity. It was like a great experience. I mean, obviously it worked out. Right. Right. But you know. What were the stakes I mean, for I was, this guy? What was I, don't it? I don't know how old I was. 27, 28. Yeah. You know, and I'm playing, you know, 50, 100,000 blinds, and you know, that was like, I mean, you know, and. I got off to loser right away, and Andy was tougher than I thought he was going to be. Like, mm -hmm. I know they had played and they had lost him or whatever, but I don't know, I had in my mind that he was going to play a certain way. He didn't play anything like how I thought he was going to play uh, when I got, when I sat down. I wasn't one back then to, um, I didn't want to listen to anyone's opinion back then, mm -hmm. you know, like, now I may talk to, there's a few guys I may talk to and listen to their opinion on poker because a lot of guys are just really talented they know what they're saying right. but back then like certain people's opinion and way they kind of uh viewed poker i looked at poker uh much differently than than most people back mm -hmm. then i would say almost everyone you know um so it was very difficult for me to kind of like uh get advice from them so i didn't get so I didn't really get the layout of how Andy was playing from now. I told him, oh, I don't really want to hear it. Yeah. You know? Let me figure it out. Let me just kind of just play him and then kind of like figure out what I see. Mm -hmm. And so when I got in there and he was like, you know, three bed and four bed in every hand, I was like, oh. <laughs> this guy's I bringing it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was, he, was, he definitely had no fear, Andy. I mean, he was like very challenging. And then at the end, I ended up, I ended up running really, really well. Mm -hmm. You know? So um, it's 500. People, people don't usually talk about these. You know, in these heads up matches, when you win, yeah. you still have to run well. You know, like kind of like you know, like you know, we're playing fifty one hundred, like you know, and fifty thousand one hundred fifty thousand one hundred thousand. You know, how much so, money you got in front of you? So, um, ten million. I think we started with, you know, mm. but it's a hundred bets and limit, yeah, limit poker. You still yeah. have to run well, right? You know, so, you know, I'm glad I won. Yeah. You know. How much did you did you end up beating this guy for? Um, Sixteen million. 16 million but you know that already so right, I mean, yeah. you asked me yeah, like I okay mean, yeah, you know the people love these kind of answers like that they love it the, they love the doubt everyone's asking me what's just, the you biggest you're just laying it up right i'm just setting you up okay that's what i do here i okay. set people up for some good answers sometimes what's like uh they all want to know about these big bets right the prop bets on the golf course the craps table and in, in, in the back rooms i mean they're all like real interested in these numbers and kind of like uh you know what's the biggest bet you ever made i don't and, really like to talk about numbers unless like you know it's documented right you don't, you don't want to be in uh, allegedly you know, I, kind of stuff uh, like that, yeah. You know, like, you know, but yeah, I used to gamble and, you know, if the right situation comes up, I still will. If yeah. there's, if there's, you know, I, I, we used to gamble quite, quite big on the golf course. Yeah. You know, one time I would say we were matched up with like, I was matched up with like 14 people and somehow, you know, you match up in the clubhouse, so I was like, why you get out there and then, um, I think I ended up hitting the ball like out of bounds my first hole and my caddy said, you know how big you're playing? I said, no. And it was like 450,000 a hole. So, yeah, yeah, that was like that was like the biggest I've ever played. Wow. I think I ended up breaking even that day or something. Mm -hmm. But you yeah. still don't mind getting on the golf course now? Maybe Cabo down there? Yeah, you know, like, yeah, you know, I like to, I like to, I, I love golf gambling. I think it's like just fantastic. Mm hmm I never tried that before, so no. I don't really know how that. We'll get you down there. You go. You come oh, down. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get me down there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're my coach. Okay, that sounds good to me. 
sounds kind of fun. So yeah, it sounds like uh, yeah, it sounds like you're in a pretty good spot with yourself with, with things going on right now. You kind of have your uh, your balance, kind of got that figured out. And are you worried now that coronavirus is over? That now more opportunity comes up, there's more traveling comes up, and, and maybe it's a little bit harder to maintain those habits and that, that, that lifestyle that you've kind of built up over these past maybe year? I think as things come up, you know, th sorry, I think as things come up, you make adjustments, you know, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you start doing a little bit more of, um, of you know, poker stuff, and then you just figure out how to put those things back into your routine. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I play a little less poker than I used to. I don't have to play, you know. 15 hours, maybe I'll quit the game after 12 hours, you know, mm -hmm. and then do my other things, you know, and get my sleep, you know, whatever, you know, you, you never know what, you never adjust, whatever, up, yeah. whatever adjustment is going to have to make, but I, I don't want to go back to the way that I was before because I know that that does not work. Right. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I'm not fearful of uh, going back because I, I, I can't go back. Yeah. I, I, you know, I have, to do, I have to take certain actions and live a certain way and you know I have to exercise and I have to you know eat a certain way and I have to do these things if I want to feel good right yeah so and that's what's most important right I mean everyone wants to feel good and be happy mm -hmm. right but in my, in my in, in my experience is is that like you know people want to be happy and people want to be content but they don't really want to a lot of times they don't want to put in the work towards that right they just want it discipline consistency you know what I mean so yeah. you know once I realized that happiness or contentment was something that I could work towards, it became okay. Versus now wishing just got, now for it, right? Yeah, yeah. versus yeah. wishing for it. Right now, you just got to work towards it. Right. Yeah. So for poker, obviously now there's a lot of new ways to get better at poker. There's a lot of new, a lot of new ways to study. Right. A lot of new programs out there. People giving different advices. Uh, do you plan to to pursue that kind of study methods in terms of uh, using the new programs available, or, or what's quote what's that? I was kind of waiting a little bit longer, and yeah. then um, and then I'm going to start practicing. Oh. You know, kind of like waiting a little bit, uh, just a little bit, just to make sure everything works, and then I'm going to find out whoever the best uh, person is and give them a ring. That's what that was my. That you want to play them or you want to practice? Practice against yeah, them. Yeah, eventually I want to practice. But when I, you know, like I, I, I kind of like haven't really gotten into practicing really like that because like I don't do anything half ass. Right. So I yeah. know once I get into it, I'm going to get into it and it's going to so like. So you want to you know, be, you I'm be gonna, prepared. I'm going to be. I got to be prepared. Like okay, well I'm going to have to give up this six months and like. Yeah. Obviously I still do my thing, but I'm going to have to really like work on this stuff. I actually you know, had so, so, so much energy throughout the day to allocate during these things. So if you're spending this on family, this on meditating, eating healthy, <laughs> working out, like you yeah, only have you so could, many you hours. You could add it, you know, like you can add it. I mean, you know, you could get, you know, I think I can, I, I, I can add it in, but I got to have the desire right. to, and I eventually, um, uh, I, I think it's going to be important thing for me to do is start practicing with poker because I never really have, Yeah. you know, so. We'll see what we'll see what that's like when I come out the other side of that. When you see uh, Daniel going on, he you know he did a big challenge against Doug Polk. He uh, you know took a little loss in that one for over a million dollars, but he he learned this new way of thinking about poker. And yeah, uh, I think he's, he's got, I, does that inspire you to I maybe think, do that I, same I think, thing? I think it's great to you know like to learn you know new ways of thinking and like you know to understand it. Mm -hmm. I think that's like obviously that's going to be super important. Yeah, you know, um, be fun. Yeah, for you, fun. imagine, fun. right? Yeah, just to learn I'm, gonna, I'm gonna enjoy myself, and what you know, if if I decide to do it, I'm gonna enjoy myself. You'll probably see things like, oh, I was thinking that in 2006, right? Like I was, <laughs> I was doing this in '03, right? Like, oh, Gresham in the later and streets, it's, and like, it's not, yeah. And, I mean, and, it's, <laughs> and, it's, and it's not like I haven't, you know, talked to people and stuff like this, and we like kind of like have went over some things or whatever. But I never actually sat and like really practiced, mm -hmm. you know, like how I hear about some guys that I know how, how much they put into it. Yeah, a lot of hours, a lot of time. I mean, yeah, a lot of hours, a lot of times and it and it and it, and it pays off, mm -hmm. you know, if for some of them. Yeah. For some of them maybe not so much. Maybe not. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, it seems like you've always been involved in the investments, the business side of things from like it seems like you just learned that early on because obviously investing is a good way to build your wealth and protect your wealth once you actually get that from any sort of earned capacity. So how did you kind of how did you understand that part? Because a lot of poker players don't seem to understand the whole entire really, idea. Of it. I don't know if I really understand exactly investing, but I'm I'm what my thing is like kind of like betting on the people that are involved, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'll 
sit down and I'll have a conversation with who, whatever it is I'm going to invest with, with the with the whoever is going to be running the show, mm -hmm. and I'll make a decision whether or not I want to bet on this guy or not. And I don't really need as much, you know. And if it doesn't work out, then I bet on the guy the next thing he does if I believe in him. Right. Yeah. So that's really that's pretty much how I invest. Mm -hmm. You, know, you kind of talk with the founder, the CEO, and maybe yeah. see who's involved in the project. Yeah, because you know a lot of people kind of give a good talk, but they're really foolish. You know, they're not really doing, mm -hmm. doing what, they're, what, they're, what they're not doing. They're not really you know get, getting things done. Yeah, and you know, some people are just talented at getting things done, and you kind of know who the winners are. You know, for me, like I got a good feel. We're like, okay, I think this guy is a winner, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to bet on him. Yeah. And a lot of times your involvement in a project helps your investment as well because you can help get attention for that or you can help spread the word up there or just your legitimacy you add to a project helps bring other people in and potentially make that whatever the product or service that you're promoting makes that even more valuable as well too. Uh, thank you. That's why they would give you uh, good deals when they're, when they're negotiating with <laughs> you, right? That's why they have you negotiate for me. I like, I like that. I could probably get some good deals. <laughs> yeah, people always love these power rankings, right? So they want to know, uh, I mean, I want to know too, right? Who are who is your top power rankings? Like who's when you think about who are the top players I played with, whether they, you know, I wouldn't say you're scared of anybody at the poker table, whether they, they they just gave you a hard time or you felt like you just you just thought they were they just had a grasp of the mental side of things and the theory side of things. And I'm not answering this. No power rankings. No power rankings. I'm no? not going to get you. You don't want to give anybody anyone, 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 anything. I don't want. I don't want to. Uh, they don't need to know. They don't want to know. I mean, they don't, they don't, they, they, they don't they, need to know. They don't need to you know. You don't want to give them that satisfaction of, of you <laughs> thinking, I see what you're saying. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, listen, man. I think, uh, you know, I do appreciate coming on here. I don't want to take okay. a ton of your time. I got, I got a lot of things on here, but I feel like we touched on a lot of these things. And, um, you know, I guess next step for you is to uh, to figure out, okay, how you can get back into poker and maybe get on some more content. We've got the 25K heads up here coming up. and. Probably a bunch of shows coming up there in the future, and it sounds like you're looking to be involved in some of those things. Yeah, I am. I'm yeah. looking to play. I'm looking to play on TV. I'm looking to travel and play poker. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking to. You know, I'm going to play the World Series of Poker. And, oh, um, I'm looking. To, so you're going to be there I'm full looking, schedule? What's going I'm, on? I'm looking. To, I don't know about full schedule, but I plan on playing quite a few events. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. be nice to see you there again. Yeah. So I'll be there. Bobby's room. Are you going to be in there? Are you going to be playing I'm, a little high stakes cash? I'm, I'm gonna, I mean, I'm going to play some high. You, uh, you know. I, I plan on it. Yeah, you know, we'll do you, see. Do you have any uh, prep tips up there for all the uh, the fans out there who are getting ready for the series later on this year? Maybe some preparation tips in terms of like well, a mental side of thing or anything like that. I would say to to, for, to the fans out there that are getting ready for the series, just to know that it's a very uh, long thing. So pace yourself. Um, um, don't play over your head. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe. Um, you know, manage your bankroll so you make it. You know, throughout the whole series and just enjoy yourself. A lot of those things don't go hand in hand. Enjoy yourself. Don't play over your head. Pace yourself. Because I think what but happens, they can. They can. They may exactly. not go hand in hand, but they can, they can. go hand exactly. in hand if you, if, you, if you put your energy into it. Well, most people I know, they don't pace themselves. They get a really unhealthy schedule right out the gate. By week three, they're ready to die because they can't like wrap their head. <laughs> like, oh, I don't have money. Like, oh, okay, right? So it's yeah. like understanding that at the beginning when it starts off and then actually pacing yourself throughout it. Having that right group of people around you remind yourself, smack, you know, what the fuck are you doing, right? You shouldn't be losing that much money in this game, like that sort of thing like that. Because, yeah, those can make or break your summer. And the games are really good out here during the summer in terms of those tournaments. The side games you're going to find are, uh, you know, there ain't nothing like this time in Vegas. No, it's a it's very not. special time. It's a beautiful time. Obviously, you've been here a long time at the World Series of Poker. And uh, I'm sure you always enjoy the experience. And, and I always ask people to give them uh, a number one piece of poker advice you might to give somebody out there in terms of if they're trying to get better at their game or if they're trying to become a more consistent winning player or anything like that. Anything that comes to mind? Um, my poker advice would be kind of this, kind of similar, uh, you know, to, to my advice in the World Series of Poker. It's kind of like, you know, um, pace yourself. Don't play over your head. Mm -hmm. Make poker. Um, you know, I would say that a lot of people have really gotten into a lot of trouble playing over their head and playing for too much money and putting themselves in some really bad spots financially. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, right. poker is a, is, a, is, a, is a, especially if you're new to poker, um, poker is a, is a very enjoyable game. It's a great hobby to have, you know. Um, and if you don't go overboard and you pace yourself and you move up in stakes at the right times mm. then you I think it'd be much uh, much more enjoyable experience yeah a lot of people get blinded by there's a, a big game there's a soft spot there's a 
a weak player in the game and they feel like they need to put themselves at risk in that situation because that opportunity might never come up again. When in reality, a lot of those opportunities do come up again. Now, sometimes they don't, but oftentimes they do. And those yeah. people put themselves at harm and take a lot of risk that they might not need to take. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I'm guilty of it too. You know, I think we all are, right? We all have done that. You know, maybe a few times. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. So <laughs> maybe you know, a few this times. Is, this is, you know, you know, do you know? This is just um, my my experience talking. You know, like yeah. I, you know, you kind of know what to do now from trial and error, mm -hmm. what works and what doesn't. Do you have a, maybe a piece of advice for people out there that are looking to be more balanced with themselves? Because you said it was a process to be able to go from this sort of like idea that I'm being selfish with with myself and then okay well how can i how can i change and how can i be more balanced and be more giving to other people but what does that process maybe like to to maybe take some steps to be able to get there i i, I just think that it's really important to prioritize what 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 what's important to you and what really matters you know what i mean so mm -hmm. like if you're not there like you know if, if poker is what really matters to you the most then that's what you're going to naturally be doing you know what i mean so um i think a lot of times people need to go through their process, whatever process that is to get there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It doesn't really what matter really kind of what you say. They have to, you have to go through it. Nothing, no greater teacher than experience, right? Right, yeah. So, um, but for maybe that one out of 100,000 is listening, I get that is uh, maybe ready or whatever. I would say that it's really important to have some sort of uh, routine, Right. you know? Uh, whether it be exercise or, you know, and also, you know, for me, what I eat is like super important to me now. It's like really important. Because that's what impacts uh, your entire mind, body, what, soul, yeah, everything. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And exactly. like I never realized how important it was. Well, everything you put into your body, whether it's visually or audibly or, or, or food wise or water wise, right? That's all going to impact the way that you perform, the way you think, the way you behave. And, and you might not even realize what these things do to you. And that's why there's people always advocating for this like certain lifestyle. And a lot of people end up down this different road with processed foods and with bad habits. They don't get enough sunlight. They don't go outside. They don't talk to people that they enjoy being around. And they wonder why, like, why am I feeling this way about things, right? And <laughs> yeah, once yeah. you can kind of start to retrace it, maybe you, you drink more water. Maybe you go outside a little bit and you just take that one step. It's, and, just, a, yeah. it's just a grind, right? You know, no, it's just, just like, you just just like anything you else. Just gotta, yeah. You got to grind it out. Yeah. You know? It's called the healthy lifestyle. Discipline, grind it out, and take one step. And ideally, if you have people around you that could help you out, that's probably a good thing, right? It's really, that it's really, your life. It's, it's really important who you surround yourself with. Yeah. 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 You feel like now you've got a pretty good surrounding group of people with you that are aligned with kind of how you maybe see things and where you might want to go with yourself here in the future? Yeah. You know, now I kind of actively kind of pursue relationships where before I was more like kind of to myself. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, of course you have your people you party with and blah, blah, blah. But like, right. as far as like, you know, uh, bettering myself and mm -hmm. stuff like this, like I'm kind of actively pursuing relationships with people, right. which has been, a, you know, different, a big part, mm -hmm. you know, of my journey. Exactly what you mean, yeah. A lot mm -hmm. of times poker, you're in your mind, you're self-isolated, you don't really want to share anything with anybody else. And uh, it's hard to put yourself out there sometimes and find those people, build that relationship, maintaining that relationship, figuring out, you know, what what am I what am I in this for? Or am I not in for anything? Or should I think that way about it? And kind of just am I in this for selfish reasons or what can I give to the relationship? Exactly. You yeah. know, like so that's that's obviously important too. Yeah, all that stuff's a real nice learning experience. So where uh, I think a lot of poker players out there are going through these same kind of things like that now. You know, they look back, they had coronavirus maybe happen, they had that shift happen, maybe games changed and now they're sort of wondering, you know, what the fuck am I gonna do with myself? Where am I going to go? What am I going to play? How am I going to adjust? And uh, and yeah, man, sounds like uh, you're in a good spot right now. I'm going to look forward to seeing what you get into as well. And I'll be seeing you down in Cabo. Appreciate you coming right. on, brother. Great talking with Thank you guys. You. Enjoy at home. Take care. Peace out. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Adios. See you later.